<laughs> Welcome to the Culture Inside Show hosted by Jay Will and Tony. Baby. And we're here to learn about the culture and your history and the insight to your future. And ladies and gentlemen, we got one of the most talented musical artists in the tri state area. Mr. AJ Swayze, what's going on with you, man? Good to see you, my boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on? How you doing? Good, good. You know, this is actually one of his new songs. He just released it, too. Get a bag, man. So, like, really, like, tell us a little bit about this track that you actually came about. Like, it's called Get a Bag. Like, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so, you know what I'm saying? At a, at a period of time, I was around some people that was making some good money, you know what I'm saying? In an in a, in a industry that's really uh, lucrative, you know what I'm saying? So, uh... I was just thinking about making money, man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> thinking about positivity, thinking about just stacking my bread, man. Like, what other way to, you know what I'm saying? Bro, you got to get a bag. That's you know what so get what got bag, you into music in the first place? Like, what made you pick up that pen and paper or pick up that microphone and was like, okay, I want to go at this full time? Um, okay, so full time, it was just, I've always been around music my whole life. I'm, I was born into a musically inclined family, you know? Um... My from my grandparents to my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, my mom, you know what I'm saying, grew up in a house full of singers, house full of musicians, you know what I'm saying. Uh, my grandpa was on the hymn choir, my grandma, my mom, and my aunt, they were all in the choir. I played the drums growing up. Um, I had an uncle that was in a Tyler Perry play, um, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, you know what I'm saying, he starred in that. And, you know what I'm saying, just growing up listening to hip hop, my first introduction to hip hop was Outkast. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My dad had brought me a drum set, and uh, the first song I played on there was uh, Miss Jackson. Sorry, Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> that, was the first, that, was the first, that was the first song I played on my drum set, bro. Like, uh, music has always been in my blood. It's been, in, you know what I'm saying? It's been around my life. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I love music. It's my passion. It's my first love for it. 100%, man. Well, look, we are glad to have you on the show today. I mean, me and Tony have been talking about this with AJ for a long time. Right. I mean, we actually, like, we went working out the other day. We yeah, got a good yeah, workout sure. in, man. Yeah. Um, fitness health is great. But, um, you know, like, where where did the name AJ Swayze even come from? <laughs> All right, so um, I got my name in high school, for real. Um, so, <laughs> literally, I came into school late because um, I, I think I had, like, an appointment or something like that. I come to school late and it's in the middle of a class change. So I'm walking through the hall. My homeboy was like, yo, what's good, Ajax? I turn around like, who are you talking to? He was like, no, I'm talking to you, bro. So I'm just like, <laughs> okay. I'm just like, all right, whatever. So that was around like 10 a.m., bro. By 3 o'clock, the whole school was calling me Ajax. Like, it got around quick. So it was just like, it stuck. So I was just like, hey. I'm gonna Where did Swayze around. come from? All right, so Swayze came from uh, around the time when everybody was doing like ASAP. Like the ASVP on like Instagram. Yeah. I was like, bro, I don't, don't want to do that, bro. I want to be different, bro. So I was just like, bro, what is different? Like, I was just like, shit, Swayze. I don't know where it came from. It just, it just came. And so I was just like, bro, that's it. Like, that's so what Swayze. does it mean? Like, what's the meaning behind Swayze? <laughs> so uh, it's an acronym for sexy, wavy, cool. You know what I'm saying? Actually, sexy, uh, wild and crazy. Mm. So you know mm. what I'm saying? Ajax Swayze, like sexy, okay. wild, crazy. Yes, that's like definitely that. a different vibe than most artists like give. So I, no, I like, sure. the, I like the look that, behind. Sure. So um, it's, it's it's great to have you on the show today. Sure. Um, ladies sure. and gentlemen, this is a music artist, songwriter, CEO, graphic designer, producer, engineer, um, director. You know he does it all. Um, that's a little bit about Ajax. Sure. And you know we we wanted to bring you on the show. You know for for a different purpose. Um, you you went through a lot of situations where you've had struggles and you had yeah, sure. tribulations and it was some hard targets that it was coming yeah. at you like it felt like it was a target on your back and you, it was a lot of things that you went through yeah, you know to sure. get to where you are right now so um, can you just tell us a little bit about um, you know some of the situations that you had to face with being a music artist. Oh, for sure, for sure. Like, um, it's tough being a music artist, especially like when you're trying to be independent. Hold um, before you tell us, <clears throat> let's take a shot real quick. <laughs> Everybody take a cheers to it. Oh, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Cheers to Ajax. Cheers, 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 cheers. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's tough being an artist, like, 
especially when you're independent, man, because a lot of people don't believe in you until you make it. Like, a lot of people don't push you, and you, it's like, I really, you know what I'm saying? I have a team, but it's like, people, I can't really explain it, bro. Like, it's kind of hard to just have that backing. Right. Like, without the funding and without, like, a major label behind you because people don't know who you are. They don't know your name. You know what I'm saying? Go to shows and they be empty crowds and you still got to perform like it's a thousand people there. Like, you know what I'm saying? And But that's just a part of the game. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes because at the end of the day, you keep going. One day you're going to be in arenas. You're going to be on stages. You're going to be at festivals. You're going to be where you want to be. So bouncing you know back to that, like, team aspect, like, yeah, yeah. who are those people around you that are pushing you to be who you know you want to be and to get to where you want to be to be successful in the industry? Um, A lot of different other artists. Like, honestly, like, it's I'm not going to say it's hard to have a team, but mm-hmm. nowadays everybody want to be the artist. Everybody want to be in the front. Right. So it's kind of not, it's kind of like, um, I don't really have a lot of, like, people behind the scenes. But I do have a lot of great artist friends, like, you know what I'm saying, like my boy Rusav, my boy uh, Mike Nunchuck, or Scotty B, you know what I'm saying, shout out to Bad Shout out, shout shout out, out to all of them. You know what I'm saying, uh, who else, um, who else, brother, you know what I'm saying, Eastside brother from Charlotte, okay. uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, it's a lot of other people, man, if I, if, I got, if I forgot the name, y'all, you know what I'm saying, y'all know it's all love. So what is it they do for you? Like I know they they, they inspire me. Like, they inspire me because it's like it's competition, but mm-hmm. we're all cool. We all grew up together. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like when I go in the studio, I, sometimes I tell them like, "Hey, I hope y'all got y'all pen together because I'm trying to I'm trying to kill you on this song for real." Right. Like, I'm trying to you know what I'm saying? So it's a competition, but it's, it's a friendly competition. Yeah, it's a friendly at the same competition time. for sure. Like you want to sure. see each other win. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's just like, um, and they are great artists, bro. Like. They they make some great music. They have some great assets. You know what I'm saying? And it's just it's just I love working with them. The only thing is is just trying to find people that want to be behind the scenes. Like I said, that want to uh, you know what I'm saying? Record all day and all night. Go through the hardships, the hardships. Yeah, just to get to the yeah, exactly. the, the point. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> but who else? Uh, it's just hard to find people like that nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, what's there? Well, I mean, Ajax, like, you know, we've had a bunch of conversations, you know. We've known each other for a yeah, very long time, you know. Yeah. We went to college together. Um, so. We've experienced a lot of things through business and marketing. Um, but one thing that, you know, you've told me that a lot about you is that you, you know, you do a lot of different things, you yeah. know. And, you know, when it comes to the music side, you you actually, you're a songwriter. You're, you you record in the studio. Yeah. You produce, you know, and you engineer. And so when you was first in the industry, how did you realize that you wanted to be a music artist versus like an actual engineer and producer? What made you choose <clears throat> that, that route of an artist? And how easy of a decision was that? Uh, really, it was really easy because I've always, like since a kid, I've always said that I wanted to be an artist. Mm-hmm. Like that was my first like position that I want to be. I want to be an artist. I want to be on stages. I want to, you know, you know what I'm saying, make music for crowds That's and that. see their reactions. Um, but... <clears throat> Producing also came to me in high school, though. Mm. Producing came to me in high school because uh, I used to always download the software Fruity Loops. I used to always download it, but I never knew what I was doing. FL yeah. Studios, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. FL okay, Studio. Okay. I, I never knew what I was doing. That. So I would always download it, then delete it. Always download it, then delete it. So one day, when, uh, my partner, Mike Nunchucker, he was like, yo, he was like, you can just go online and find loops and just add your drum patterns to the loops. So I'm like, what? So... He showed me how to do that, and I was like, oh, this is going to go crazy. Like, So then my cousin pulled me to the side one time, and he actually showed me how to make melodies on Fruity Loops. Mm. So now I had both aspects of just placing drum tracks on loops and then making my own melodies. So that made me want to get into producing more. And, um, yeah, so engineering, that's something that I want to pursue as well. But right now I'm focused on just being an artist. I'm focused on putting my music out there. What about being an artist intrigues you compared to being like an engineer or producer? Like what pulled you towards getting up on that stage and wanting to do those type of things rather than being behind the scenes and being the one who makes the music? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, like I said, just growing up, actually just seeing my uncle, like mm. performing, uh, like seeing him in that play. He was in Diary of a Mad Black Woman. And um, 
just seeing him on stage, just singing and having fun, and that just made me want to do that. Like, and also like just listening to my favorite artists growing up, Outkast, um, Goody Mob. At the time when I was a young kid, Lil Bow Wow was popping. Right. So, you know, um, all the shout out to Bow Wow, man. That's a that's a guy yeah, that I'm really not, I'm not gonna lie. really er, said er, the er, stage. Everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody tries to like downplay Bow Wow, but it's like. He's a legend. You can't take that away from him. Like, and since and he kid, took his like, music career to the you acting, me? acting industry as well. Yeah, for sure. So it's just like he get a lot of flack nowadays because yeah. I feel like he does do some things that's like considered corny nowadays. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like he was doing things that certain people weren't doing when they were like when he was like nine years old. And speaking like, of what Bow Wow was doing, you kind of remind me of you know the situation that he was using with when it came to his music. Um, you. You make singles, but you also make projects that have a story behind them. Yeah, for sure. Um, you you actually released a, a single called No Time. <laughs> Not for sure. You actually released a single called No Time. Um, okay. And, like, you know, it sounds a little bit like this, you know, but, like, I feel like, you know, when it comes to, like, hearing this song, you was you was really going through a, a time and place where you put your your real life situation into your lyrics. Yeah. Um, sure. Tell us a little bit about this new single. <laughs> All right, so um, No Time is basically just about me not having time to deal with a certain woman that was in my life. Um, I really didn't have time for her because I was out here chasing a bag. I was out here trying to, you know what I'm saying, get to it, stay my paper in. Sometimes she couldn't understand that. So it was just like me just trying to be out here trying to get my money. She, you know what I'm saying, she thinking I'm out here doing other things or like just... You know what I'm saying? Not she feel like you off track, but you really yeah. focused. And, and it was just like she wanted the attention that I couldn't give to her at the time. So it was just like, I, I don't have no time for you. I'm sorry, but I'm out here trying to grind. I'm out here trying to get to it. Trying to be successful. Yeah, you have yeah, goals yeah. and stuff. Build my brand and do what I got to do to make it to the next level. And it's just like, I can't give you that time. Okay. Yeah, bouncing off of that, it's like you always have some like type of meaning behind your lyrics. Yeah. How do you go about pursuing the different avenues you go with your lyrics and like, trying to have a certain meaning behind it to touch those fans that are trying to listen to your music. No doubt. Uh, so sometimes, like, I just try to dig deep and really, like, realize that my life has a meaning. Like, my mm -hmm. life is a story to tell people. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? It's, it's, I want to inspire others. I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to touch people that, that may not have that hope or may not have, like, that confidence or some stuff like that. So it's just like... I just try to, you know what I'm saying, use my real life topics. Like, I don't really go into it thinking big, like thinking deep. I just tap into who I am as a person and really just put it into my lyrics and let people know that this is what I go through. Somebody else might be going through the same exact thing, but it might be a little different or, you know what I'm saying, like that. So that's just how it is with me. I just, you know what I'm saying, I want to just tell my story and, and see how people relate to it. And speaking about your story, like, you actually created a clothing brand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Throughout, and you saying like you want to tell your story through your music. Yeah. But your clothing brand is is called you know Mud Money. Mud Money. And sure. it's it's about getting it out of the mud. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit about how you was inspired <laughs> to create this clothing brand, and you know what it means to you coming from your music. All right, so I was really inspired just um, just by struggling, man. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to get to it and. Sometimes you may not have a way to make ends meet, or sometimes, you know what I'm saying, you got to figure out how to, you know what I'm saying, you got to figure out how to get to it. Sometimes you got to get stuff out the mud. Everybody don't have handouts. Everybody don't have, like, somebody that they can reach out to and, you know what I'm saying, help them to get a bag. And it's just like, you got to get stuff out the mud. You got to go do things that you wouldn't normally do to get something that you want. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying, get it out the mud stands for multiply your dollars daily or multiply your dividends daily. You feel me? So every single day, I'm just trying to stack. I'm just trying to add a, a, another dollar that I didn't have yesterday. You feel me? Yeah. So that's really all that is. Multiplying your dollars daily. I love that. Get into it. Get it out How do you want to incorporate like the business for get it out the mud with your artist and like being who you are in the music industry? I mean, I feel like it goes hand in hand. Okay. Because either way, you got to get out the mud. <laughs> like that, right. you got, no matter you what I mean, you do. You know what I'm saying? Whether, whether it's legally or illegally, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not promoting nothing crazy, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying people are going to do what they do. So it's just like, so however you got to get to it, do it. Whether it's, you know what I'm saying, door dashing, 
You know what I'm saying? Whether it's selling t-shirts, whether it's, you know what I'm saying? Shoot, females on OnlyFans, like, bro, they, they take bread too. That's true. I ain't gonna lie. You know that's, what I'm saying? Money it's, is money, for real. I'm, I'm not promoting it, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? People stack bread every... Like, but it's... But some at, of them be making some money off of it. Exactly. That's a crazy thing. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's, just, like, it's not really that easy, though. You know, it's like, not, it, it, you go through a lot of different type of things of being a musical see, artist, being a business owner, you know, and, it, and and a lot of people just see the the glamour and the glistening yeah, of sure. it, but they don't know right. how much tears and it's, sweat and blood that it takes to really it's, it's not gonna be your easy. craft. It's not going to be easy. If anything is easy, I don't want it. That's just my, mm-hmm. that's just my perspective. I don't like easy, because at the end of the day, Write that down like, to me. Write easy down not going to get you nothing, man, because it's like, you didn't put in no work for this. You just expected it just to come to you, like, huh. you just want it just because it's like, oh, this is easy. Mm. Nah, I don't want no easy stuff. Because at, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not tangible. Like, it's right. like, it's going to fold on you. Like, when you put in that blood, sweat, and tears, like, can't nobody really take that away from you, for real, once you get established. Like, because it's like, this is yours. You earned That's the no right lie. to this. That's you no feel lie. me? Like, you earned the right to, to whatever you got going. Whatever you want to do in life, you earned it. You put in that work. Because at the end of the day... God got God not gonna bless you until you start helping yourself. You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna help you until you start helping yourself. So at the end of the day, it's just I don't want no easy, I don't want nothing easy. It, it don't, it ain't work. Mm. So what do you feel like was that one moment within your career so far that you were like, okay, I feel like I can pursue this and it's like uh, it just kind of stumped you at first, but you were able to get through that and like face that adversity. Okay, so I got a story. So this, okay, so okay. Um, Hold up. Let's take a shot before the story, though. Okay, okay, okay. All right, cool, cool. All right, so all right. Okay, so um, I I found out about this um uh, this competition mm-hmm. through someone. I think he think he DM me or inboxed me on Facebook at the time. So he was a producer and he was working for um, a big label, mm-hmm. a label at the time. And he was like, "Yo, um, I see your work and everything. I want you to perform in this in this contest, or whatever this competition." Right. So I was like, "Okay, cool." So I do the competition. In my opinion, I actually won the competition. But what happened is somebody ended up coming late, and they actually knew the guy that was hosting the whole event. Oh wow! Uh-huh. So he came late and he ended up performing. And his performance wasn't, I'm not, I'm not sound, trying to sound arrogant or nothing, but his performance wasn't as good as mine. And I could tell through like the crowd reaction and everything. So I ended up losing to him. Wow. So th- with the competition, hell was to, get a, crazy. To, to take a trip to Atlanta. I was supposed, like, I was supposed to take a trip to Atlanta and um, perform for the label. Mm. So um, what happened was he ended up winning. So the day of the, the, day of the Atlanta competition. Right. I get a I get a, uh, in, a inbox was saying basically like who, the who, guy, who, who inboxed you the guy that hosted the event okay so he invi- uh, when he invited me so he basically told me that the guy that won the contest wasn't gonna be able to make it to Atlanta and could I could like could I make it at the time I was standing in Winston Salem North Carolina which mm-hmm. is maybe like what four or five hours from Atlanta um, the, the competition started at ten when he texted me this it was like four o'clock. Oh, wow. And I was in school. Like, so you got I'm, six hours to go. Yeah, I got six hours to go to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, and, um, you know what I'm saying, perform and everything. So I'm actually at school. And uh, so I'm going back and forth like, yo, should I, should I do this? I'm talking to my roommate like, yo, should I go to Atlanta? He's like, bro, I mean, I understand that the, that the dude that was supposed to go, he can't make it. And it's just like, you were really supposed to win that competition. He was like, do you want to do it? And I'm just like, well, but I'm going to do it. We hop on the road. We get there. How long did it take to get there? Maybe like four or five hours. Mm. Four or five hours, like, you know what I'm saying, including track. Like, That's right. Four, so you there, hours. like, right on time? Uh, kind of. Like, around, because, like, by the time I got there, they hadn't started yet. But mm. Yeah, that was, supposed to time, that was supposed to be the time. So how long you got there? Uh, so, you know what I'm saying, I get there, um, and actually, I'm one of the last people to perform. Like, and it's maybe, like, 10 plus artists. Mm-hmm. And so the event started at 10. I didn't perform until like 1 a.m. So I'm just like, damn. So you sitting there waiting for a few hours. Yeah, so I'm like, yo. I'm so you just there. travel. Wait, yeah, six hours. Didn't even have, 
this is at the time I didn't have money for a hotel room. I didn't have money, like, you know what I'm saying? I just went down there on the, you know what I'm saying, just, you know what I'm saying, just on hope, you feel <laughs> Yeah. So I didn't have room for a hotel room. I mean, I didn't have no money for a hotel room at the time. So after I performed, it's like almost 2 o'clock now. Had to hit the road back. Didn't make it back to Winston until like 8 in the morning. That's nine another morning. 5, 6 hours yeah, back. back. Yeah, for sure. After then I, performing, then, across from then, 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 I, then I ran into morning traffic, so you feel me? Like, That's wild. So how did it go when you performed? Perform, man. By the time I performed, it wasn't nobody really in there. It's maybe like only like five, six people in the in the crowd. Wow, wow, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, hey, that's a part of that's a, just a part of this game. Like a lot of times, you're not gonna it's gonna be curveballs thrown at you. You're not gonna be able to you know what I'm saying perform in front of everybody. Like when I was, when I first got there, it was a lot of people there. As soon as one person that they knew performed, they end up leaving. So it was maybe like only five, six people in the audience when, by the time I performed, but I performed like it was like 10,000, so. And I feel like that's, that's what matters. When an artist actually yeah. goes out there, no matter the amount of people that are out there or the amount of people that know them, right. they go out there and give them their heart, and that's yeah. what matters. Like, people see that. The people that are actually listening to their music are going to see like, okay, they're coming out here to give me a show, and I'm going right. to pay attention. Like, I paid my money to watch them, or, like, I just came to see them because they're here to give me a show. Like, I want to see what they're feeling like and learn their lyrics so that way I can understand how that's they're feeling. Make, that's what makes yeah. the fans fall in love with you even more. Exactly. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It's genuine. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you actually... You actually have music videos as well. Yeah. And them just have to be hard. Um, I was actually, you know, I was speaking to another artist about this the other day, but like your, your music videos tell a story about what you wrote in your lyrics. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> does your lyrics have to, you know, tell the story of the music video or are you actually feeling the moment in the song make you tell the story of the music video? I mean, honestly... It doesn't have to, because I mean, the music is, just comes first anyways. So it's mm -hmm. just like, I don't really make music based off of a video idea. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it's just like, I just keep listening to it and I'll just be like, how would this play out? How would this go? You know what I'm saying? What could I do right here? Like, what can I add to this lyric? Or like, what, what visuals can I bring to this song? Like, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's, it's merely just... You know what I'm saying? Just sometimes, sometimes I go into a music video with an idea already, and sometimes I actually let just the director come with the ideas, like yeah. see how this goes, like give them full control. Sometimes I I like having control, but other times it's just like, hey, surprise me. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually gonna take a break. Um, this show is actually sponsored by Who Shot That Media Productions and actually Mud Money Multiply Your Dollars Daily. And we actually have, you know, two of those business owners on the show. But, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right back into the show. So, Ajax, you've, you've traveled around the world. You've been to Miami. You've been to Texas. You've been to New York. You've been to so many different places around the world. You've done, done shows, music videos. Yeah. You've recorded with different producers. They've, you know, like... How important is like these relationships that you're, you know, creating with all these producers and different artists around the world that's like helping you to be successful? Oh, it's real important because at the end of the day, you need connections. You need people to, you know what I'm saying? You need, everybody needs somebody. You know what I'm saying? You need producers because without right. the producers, artists wouldn't be an artist. Like the producers actually are the, the stars. So the producers are like one of like the yeah, main yeah, keys yeah, yeah, of a yeah, 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 project. Yeah. yeah. And because it's like without them, you really want to have artists because the artist is going to be rapping a cappella. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that could work, but right. the producers, they make the, you know what I'm saying? They make the groove and the feel of how everybody be feeling, like, be vibing and stuff. So it's cool to have those connections because every producer has something different. Every producer is unique in their own way. And I feel like people don't want to just hear the same style every song like the same thing every single time so it's good to make connections and switch up your sound and switch up your flow because at the end of the day if you if you stay the same you're gonna get washed up that's true you know what i'm saying you gotta you gotta be able to keep up with what's going on you gotta be able to switch it up sometimes 
You can't stay the same. You can't stay complacent. Speaking of being like a producer, I know you said like you actually produce a lot of your music yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What makes you decide if you want to put your lyrics to a beat you produce compared to a beat someone else produced or like what what's the decision making behind Um, that uh, sometimes it's just sometimes i might just be making a beat and a hook coming to my head or like i just start freestyling wait so you make the beat first and then you do the lyrics well yeah so sometimes yeah yeah so a lot of times i don't really rap on my own beats like that Mm -hmm. unless it's just like like i said it's just a vibe okay like um so my song blow my heart. This is crazy. <laughs> this, this is crazy. This I want to hear this. This is probably one of I want to hear this. This is probably one of my favorite songs. So blow my heart. I actually made that beat, and uh, I was just vibing to it. So I started writing to it. Mm-hmm. So I was on my way to the studio. I had maybe like twenty minutes left. My laptop crashes on me. Oh my god. My laptop crashes on me. I lose. I lose the beat. <laughs> so, I, but I remember what I did with the beat. So. I pull it back up. I remade the beat in maybe like ten minutes. And, then, and then I had same beat. Yeah, the same minutes. beat. I redid it and made it in ten minutes. Then I had to go straight to the studio. See, what skill do you feel like took to be able to do that? Like how how many hours did you put in on FL Studio to be able to maneuver something like that in that uh, such short that's time? That's a lot of that's a years. lot of things to maneuver. Like, yeah, exactly. like years because when I made that when I made that song I was making beats for maybe like six years. Mm. Maybe like so yeah. the experience is what really made yeah, it. Yeah, like six, seven years. So yeah. So by that time I was making beats, I was making beats for a minute. I was making beats for a while. So it it just comes second nature for real, honestly. That's a different type of talent to be able to make beats and to be able to record your own music on those beats. You yeah, know? like that, that's a, that's a different type of talent. Yeah. I mean, Ajax like. What's going on now? Like, we want to know what's some new music dropping, man. I don't know where the new music at. What's coming on? What's next? going on? I'm trying to hear what's going on, man. You got a, you got singles coming out. You got albums coming out. What's going on, man? People want to know. Right now, I'm working on a. Um, I'm working on an album. I'm working on an okay. Album. I don't have a name. Hey, let's take a shot name. to the new album coming the new soon, album. man. The new album. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. So, uh, yeah, I'm working on a new album. I actually don't have a name for it. Uh, so far, I've recorded maybe like, maybe like 10 songs. How many are you planning on putting on it? Uh, maybe like 12, 13. Okay. okay. But even those 10, I'm I, I'm not just going to put those 10 just on there. I'm probably going to make like, I want to make like a stack of songs. Are you going to have music videos dropping with the album, or are you the music videos going to come after the album? Um, I haven't decided yet. Okay. Because right now... right You now, know, you just don't want to tell know, us. I, 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 I haven't decided yet because right now I'm really just... Uh, I'm just in the process of just recording. Okay. Like, of course, I know I want an album, but like right now it's just... I'm just getting back into the flow of the studio because with me, when I make music, I like to take time and reset. I like to take time and take breaks. I don't like to just put out music because it's like... Yeah, of course, the music is, you know what I'm saying, it's, I like quality over quantity. A lot of artists, they put out a lot of quantity. You want songs to have yeah. longevity behind them. You just yeah. don't want to just throw a low. So, so like, yeah. I feel like one good example would be like someone like NBA Youngboy. He's putting out yeah. like week after week. Right. But then you see someone like Uzi, he's dropping like every like six to six months to right. three years. You don't know when he's going to drop. It's yeah. like they have different timelines, but their fan bases are just as loyal. It really just depends on what they're looking yeah. for and how they're going to connect with it. So you take quality over quantity. Yeah, I like quality over quantity. There's nothing wrong with liking quantity over quality at times. But mm-hmm. For me, just personally, I like to take breaks because sometimes life happens. Right. So I just, and things happen to the point where it's just like, I don't feel like recording Right now, so let's talk about one of those okay. tracks. Um, you had a track called "Get a Bag," right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was what was you going through? You know, in the, in this part of the song, like you you was going through a situation in your life. It was like you was just getting a bag. Was it a time that like you was it a time where you were struggling and like you know oh, yeah. you didn't you didn't know where you, where the money was gonna come from? Like, oh, yeah, tell sure. us a little bit about like how this song came to be. Oh yeah, and what sure. you went through. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm living in an apartment uh, at school, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at the time, I wasn't working. I was just really just being a full-time student. Um, 
without having to ask my people for help. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to I wanted to prove right. that I'm a man, you know what I'm saying? I can handle these things on my own. Um and like I said earlier, I ran into uh <laughs> I ran into, you know what I'm saying, a business. I ran into, you know what I'm saying? I, I I started surrounding myself with people that were um, making some good money, that okay. were, you know what I'm saying, that were uh, giving some good information. I met you in this business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, we knew each other before this business, yeah, yeah. but we did business yeah, together. we did business together, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, at that time, that felt empowering because it's just like, okay, I'm around a certain caliber of people now. I'm around uh, people that's making money. I, I'm trying to get to that point as well, you know what I'm saying? So, it's just like... At the time, I was struggling, but I knew that the bag was coming. Let's get yeah. a bag, you know what I'm saying? So that's how that came about, um, just going through the struggle. Because at the end of the day, struggle is inevident. You know mm. what I'm saying? You can't escape that. Everybody everybody has to go through it at one point. So, you know what I'm saying? I embraced it. Now, uh, touching on that struggle, man, uh, <laughs> if you had one thing to say to these young viewers out here, young, old, wherever they're at, trying yeah. to pursue something like you're pursuing, yeah, yeah. whether it's being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, being a right. uh, artist, artists. producer, engineer, anything they're looking to do, what would Director. you say to them? What would I say to them? Um, so to anybody that's older, you're never, it's never too late to go after your dreams. You're never too old. Um, to my young, to the young people out here, man, stop trying to rush, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't rush it. Patience is key. Patience is key for real. Like, don't try to rush, like, what you got going because if you try to rush ahead of your time, you end up messing it up at the end of the day. Like, a lot of times, things happen for a reason. You might get a no for a reason. You know what I'm saying? That might be a no to show you, like, hey, this is, like, what I have for you. I got something else for you. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like... Sometimes I feel like a lot of people don't know how to take no. They don't know how to, they don't want to struggle because social media, man. Social media is like, everybody's seeing people on social media. It's really a hoax at this point. Exactly. Like, like, it takes a thousand no's to yes. get to that one yes like, that you're looking for that that's really going to push you to where you need to be. Yeah. People don't realize that, but it's going to take a lot of no's before you yeah. get to that right yes. And, and yeah. because a lot of times people just, people, Instagram, social media is really just highlights. People right. don't show their lowlights. People mm -hmm. might show you, oh, I got this bitch. They show you, oh, I got they show this. you what's, what's I got good. This. That's right. what I'm when they yeah. travel into a new city, it's something, but they saying. don't see you when they don't miss a bill, they don't miss the rent, a family, situ family death. Right. They don't like, show you that when stuff. They gotta so. ask, when they got to ask for money, they got to ask for a loan. That's like, real talk. You know what I'm saying? People just showing, oh, yeah, I did this, I made this accomplishment, but they're not showing what they had to go through to get that. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are looking at certain people that's like, dang, this person, my age, and they. Got this, dang, I'm ready to get like that. Like, See, that's the whole problem. Comparison is like it out of the picture. It kills. Everybody has a different path in their life, and whether you're gonna Tell hit me. it in the right You area. got a tattoo that actually talks about what you're talking about right now. Yeah, don't compare yourself to others. Not for sure. Oh, sure. It's a Japanese idiom, and it's like don't compare yourself to others because people are gonna have their own path, and people are gonna take their own venture to get to yeah. where they wanna be, and nobody has a set time to be in a certain place. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I agree with that because, um, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people try to compare themselves to, like, so many people. They might try to compare themselves to their siblings, mm -hmm. their parents, mm -hmm. especially nowadays artists. Like, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people look up to certain artists and they like, hey, I want to live that life. Right. I want that life. But they don't know what they're asking for because they don't know what that person has to do to get What's to that point. What's the definition of success to you, Ajax? For somebody <laughs> out here that wants to be successful... Success. What's your definition of success? Success is in the eye of the beholder. Because some like, people think it's money. Nah, some people yeah, think yeah. it's the best cars, so, the biggest house. What's mm -hmm. your definition of success? So success, in my opinion, success is the eye of the beholder. So whatever your thought of success is, that's what it is. So if you think it's a house and you get that house, and you'd be like, Damn, I made it. That's your success story. Somebody else might say, hey, when I get this certain amount of money, I've made it. When so, I get on stage, when I get on stage in front of all these people, I've made it. So for me, my success story is basically just when I'm able to just really feed the people around me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Being able to put other people in a position to put like to help their families. You know what I'm saying? Being able to put, put people in a position to win. To win, yeah, for sure. That's my success story. I don't really care about the materialistic stuff. I want to inspire people. I want to help people give people jobs. Like, you, you feel like that's your yeah. purpose? Could be. 
See, that goes back to saying everybody has their own path because not yeah. everybody is going to have the same purpose. Yeah. Everybody's why is different. We were just talking about this the other day when we were having one of our other interviews, and we were talking about like why the why is so important. Yeah. If you don't have a why with what you're doing, you're not going to be successful it's or not be gonna able make to achieve what you want. You're not going to. You're not going to want to be dedicated. You're just yeah. going to be motivated. motivated. Exactly. Motivated yes. runs out. Dedication <laughs> lives on forever. Not for real. Like a lot of people just wake up not having a why. And just like a lot of people just wake up and just be like, oh, I got to go to the job. But why do you got to go right. to the job? Like, do you have somebody that you want to support? Do you have somebody that you want to put in place? Do you do you have like a bill that you need to pay? Like, do you have anything that's lucrative to why are you going to this job? Like, why are you waking up and you know you're miserable at this job, but you're just going to the job just to get a paycheck? Right. Why are you doing it? A lot of people don't know that why. You know what I'm saying? They just doing stuff just to because somebody told them, go out here and get a job. Right. You know well, what I'm first off, Ajax, I do want to say we do appreciate you for coming on the show, oh, yeah. man. We've uh, we've had a pleasure speaking with you. You know, we've uh, had plenty of conversations off the camera, but we've yeah, been finally so. able to get this uh, this full death conversation on camera. I mean, so we do appreciate you coming on. It's been amazing, sure, man. Sure, man. Yeah, I, appreciate I mean, Ajax, you want like your music is inspiring. It helps a lot of people out here. You know, get through tough times. You know, that's what the culture insight is all about. It's about learning the culture, your history, and the insight to your future. Yeah. And so we are back with another episode with Ajax Swayze. Yeah, Glad to have you here, man. Sure, man. It's an amazing experience. Sure, and we're going to sure. go ahead and uh, take a quick last shot of this episode. You did. Shout out Mud Money. Hey, stand up for this. Nah, no sitting down. Shout, shout out to Mud Money. No, Let's get it, man. No. It's the culture inside, baby. We out. That shit was fire. I ain't gonna lie, man. Yeah, we killed that one. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that motherfucker. We killed that one. I was smooth for shit, though. I feel like in the beginning, I feel like in the beginning, it was like a little slow. Yeah, yes, sir. It was a little slow, but I think he got the ball. Yeah, we got that bitch rolling. Hey, 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 we got that bitch rolling. Me and you started flowing with that. And then when I, when I looked oh, up, bullshit. I seen TJ and Miles both recording, but I was like, this shit hurts all night. That just came natural, so it's like, see that. Oh, man. We need to make something up, bro. We gotta have a handshake after this.